Good morning, everyone. Janie here. Welcome back to my garden. So it is the first day that I've filmed since I launched my merchandise on my website. And I just have to say, I am blown away. Thank you all so much for supporting me and for supporting my channel and for supporting my family. You all are so wonderful and I love you all so much for being so supportive. You you guys are just so, so amazing. So thank you, thank you, thank you for purchasing my shirts and my hats. Uh, this hat sold out really, really quickly, uh, which I was really excited about. It's probably my favorite as well. So if you guys um, are interested in this natural hat uh i we are working on restocking it very very soon so anyway i just wanted to say a huge thank you to all of you i am working on packing up your orders right now and shipping them out you know what let i just I, let me show you inside because it's it's so it's just pretty interesting <laughs> i never thought i would be doing stuff like this packing up merchandise so let me show you Okay, so prepare yourself for a bit of craziness. <laughs> we have decided to make the dining room kind of like, um, I don't know, ground zero for packing everything up and getting everything uh, put together, packaged up, and then uh, being prepared to be shipped out. And it's just been so much fun. We've decided to roll the shirts like this. Isn't that cute? And then these are the boxes that they're gonna come in and then um uh let's see <laughs> this is i you know i feel like i could set it up in a better way but this is just kind of how it ended up jason and i were up late last night doing this and it was actually fun it was pretty interesting uh, a scale to weigh everything and then these are all the boxes that are packed up and ready to be shipped out so i just have to say thank you all so much oh yeah and cat litter <laughs> for jeffrey thank you all so very much i am so so excited and I hope you all are going to love your new dig plant water repeat gear. I am in love with it. I think it is absolutely beautiful um, and I cannot wait for you to get all of yours. And I will say all of these boxes, these are only about a third of the orders that I got on Saturday, the day that I launched everything. So thank you so much to all of you who ordered. Okay, enough about merchandise, I promise. Let's get on to gardening. So I have realized that I need to get out into the garden every single day to stay sane, <laughs> to stay myself. Um, and even if it's like for 15 minutes, it really does make a huge difference for me. So what I've been trying to do is I've been trying to get up early every day and just come out here into the garden and just be by myself and just do what I need to do. I'm trying to do it early just because I know it's going to start getting hot and I feel like that that's the best time that I can do it. So today, because I was packing up all the merchandise. I know I said I wasn't going to talk about merchandise anymore. Um, it's been a little bit later that I've been able to get out here, but I've been able to get out here. I don't know if y'all can hear that, but they are doing massive street work just down the street. So ugh, it's going to be tough with, <laughs> with recording, but I'll see what I can do. So I have a couple things that I wanted to get planted today. And most of them are from my trip to Van Winden's in Napa with Julio. I will link his uh, garden tour down below along with my Van Winden's garden tour which is this beautiful nursery in Napa and Julio completely inspired me. I feel like he is a master at shade plants and this area right here by my front door is is my shade area. Really that area and then also this area which is the north side of my house that's another shade area that you know I've been I've been really working on. So I got really inspired by his garden um, and bought a couple plants basically copied him but he was very appreciative about it and very sweet about it. So let me show you guys what I got. So I would say my Supertunia mini vistas are filling in nicely <laughs> don't you think? <laughs> it's looking so good over here. Okay, so when I went to Van Winden's with Julio, the first thing we got was this dwarf princess Alstrom Alstromeria. I feel like I always say that wrong. This plant is so pretty. This is actually the first Peruvian lily I have. It's also called a Peruvian lily. He had one in his front garden in a white pot. It was so beautiful. I had a black pot here, so I don't know if you all remember, I planted these three pots up for spring and 
it looked really pretty for spring, but then everything started kind of fading. I had some pansies here and they were just getting too hot. So I took them out. I had some columbine there. I took them out. Um, and then I had helichrysum. And helichrysum is not one of my favorite plants, I would have to say. I thought it would be more of a trailer type of plant, but it was like sticking up everywhere. I'll take you guys in the backyard and show you all the ones that I have growing in the backyard in my topiary uh, containers. It just it just looked a little messy for me. So I kind of cleaned it out and then I went ahead and I planted this Peruvian lily right here. And I think it looks so pretty. I do have to come and clean. Uh, I think it looks so pretty. Julio had this one in a white pot. It looked beautiful, but then I also like it in a black pot too because of the contrast. Um, so that is one of them. The other one that I got is this Nelly Moser Clematis, which is so beautiful. So you can see the little seed heads, which I think are just the most interesting thing. They say that this plant gets up to nine feet tall. It can take full sun to part shade. The reason why I wanted this is he had his Clematis growing up, his weeping cedar. And it was, I, I mean, he, he didn't even have anything for it to grow up. It was just growing up the tree. I'll put it, I'll put a little clip in right here. And then when I was doing, I did a little video for Garden Design Magazine about my jasmine. And I remembered that uh, they, all, you know, it's recommended to have clematis as a companion plant for star jasmine. And you can just have it kind of climb up the star jasmine and have the flowers kind of poke through. So I want to plant my Nellie Moser clematis. I actually want to plant it right here. Um, it, you can get, what does it say? Part shade full sun to part shade is what it says so I think it gets about part sun right here and I'm just gonna train it up right here and kind of weave it in with the other star jasmine right there I think it is going to be so pretty once it really starts growing up and like filling in throughout here I think it'll be I think it'll be perfect then over here I have this Jack Frost Brunnera. And I have to admit, I've always been a little bit worried about Brunnera. I felt like we were too hot here. Look at these pretty flowers. Felt like we were too hot here in zone 9B. Um, but if you look here, it does say zones one through 24. And what that is talking about, that is talking about sunset gardening zones. And I am sunset gardening zone 14. So this is going to be perfectly happy in my garden. I don't know why I was so scared of trying this plant. It's going to be, it, it's going to be happy as a clam. So I, haven't quite decided. I got to think about where I want to put these. I got three of them. Um, so one option that I have, you can see here, I have a Southern sword fern in this kind of shade area. This Southern sword fern has outgrown this spot. It is too big. It's taking over. It's pushing my hydrangea over. It's pushing some of my star plant, um, uh, spider plants over, not star plants, spider plants. It, it's too much. It needs to come out and it blocks the sidewalk. Um, so I'm thinking about taking that out and replacing the Brunera right there. But then the other option I had was over here. This is the north side of my house. It gets shade almost all day. It gets the slightest bit of sun in the morning and then the rest of the shade. It's kind of a line right here. I don't know if you guys can tell. And that's why I have these Supertunia mini vistas right here and they can, it's, it's stretching it. It's definitely stretching it with the sun versus shade, but so far they seem to be doing almost as good as the ones that are in full sun right here. Um, but as you get closer to the house, it's more shade. So I was thinking, I have this little opening right here. I was thinking it would be really, really pretty. And it's right next to this tiny tough stuff hydrangea. Look at how beautiful that is. And I just thought the silvery, you know, foliage of the Brunnera is just going to look so pretty next to that. And then next to this crazy, I mean, it is so happy, this lungwort or pulmonaria. It, I just, I think I'm going to put it there. Now that I'm talking about it, I think that that's a really good spot for it. And it's a nice open spot. So if you all haven't watched Julio's garden tour yet, watch it. It is so inspiring. He does not have a big garden. It is very, very small. But the way that he plants things 
are so interesting. He plants things right next to each other. He just kind of puts it right next to each other and it's almost like it's the most beautiful layered garden. And he was talking about the seasonality of his garden and how he thinks of what his garden's gonna look like in winter and spring and summer and fall. And I love that. I think that that is so fantastic. And it's such, it's why I love doing those garden tours because I get inspiration from every single place I go to. When I, you know, when I see something that they do in their garden, it's, I immediately think, think, oh, I want to do that in my garden. Oh, I want to do that. And I hope my garden tours do the same thing for you all, where you all can see what some other gardens, you know, the other gardens that I go visit and my garden as well. I hope it all gives you the same inspiration for your garden. So on that note, with Julio doing such a fantastic job with the seasonality of his garden, I am thinking this is a good spot for it because the tiny tough stuff mountain hydrangea is deciduous and so it's going to be cut back in the fall winter. My hostas that I have right here they're going to go away obviously they're herbaceous perennials and then even this limelight prime right here it's deciduous it's going to lose all its leaves so I really don't have anything and of course my supertunias are going to be gone in the winter as well. So I don't really have anything right here that has any winter interest so putting a little bit of uh, Brunner uh, which is an evergreen perennial I think is going to really help and then I can just start making my way with a little bit more winter interest maybe like a boxwood or something behind like right here wouldn't that be pretty a topiary boxwood okay I just thought of that but I want to do that <laughs> so so anyway so that's my plan I think I'll put the brunner up right there um I do want to show you guys this this is a purple trumpet vine this is the scientific name for it. One of you, I'll put your name, uh, if, I, if I can find it. Gosh, I hope I can find it. I'll put your name on the screen. I just wanted to thank you so much. I'm pretty sure you grew this from seed. This is um, what Aaron, the impatient gardener, grew and loved so much. And my purple hyacinth bean that I love in my backyard, that was inspired by Aaron, the impatient gardener, as well. So I feel like I'm going to really like this. So I have to find a full sun place to plant this vine. Last thing, so I have this extra pot right here. It's pretty empty. What I want to put in that is not, I did not get it at Van Winden's. I actually got it at Wintour Garden in Reading when I was doing the Proven Winners event there. I found the new Pufferfish Panicle Hydrangea. I've been wanting to get my hands on this one. Look at that hydrangea. It, oh my goodness, it's just so beautiful, fluffy. Um, let's see, what do they say? Hardiness, USDA three, USDA three through eight. Again, take that with a grain of salt because if you think about the sunset zones and the microclimates in your garden, you you know I can do limelight hydrangeas no problem. Um, let's see, it says when pufferfish hydrangea flowers, its foliage nearly disappears under the blizzard of blooms. A neat and unusual tuft of extra florets burst burst from the tips of the flower in late summer. That, I'm just so excited about this. So temporarily, I'm thinking about putting it in here just for this year because I think it'll be really pretty. I will transplant it out into the garden somewhere probably um, when it's dormant next year, but I just wanna get this guy planted so that hopefully I can get some blooms this season. We'll see, it blooms in, in summer, late summer, um, and I thought it would be a really good place for it. So I'm gonna plant that there. I'm gonna plant the clematis right over there, and then I'm gonna plant the Brunnera over there. All right, let's get going.
For those of you who watched my pest control video that aired yesterday, I was bragging about not being able to find any budworms. I spoke too soon. Right there. Budworm. So I'm gonna pick them off. And I'm not gonna show you guys because it's gross, but I'm gonna smash them. <laughs> so sad. Anyway, all right, so I've got all three Brunera planted, looking good. I've mulched. This is the mulch I use. I got this from my friend Robbie, or got the idea from my friend Robbie, and I love it. Garden Time Pathway Ground Cover. I get it at Home Depot. Let me clean up and uh, blow everything off so it looks nice and pretty, and then I'll show you all everything I did. Okay, so all done. I've got my pufferfish hydrangea all planted up in this pot. I even mulched it to keep it cool. And then I mulched my Peruvian lily and my boxwood spiral. I think it looks beautiful, nice and clean looking. And then over here, you can barely see it. <laughs> you will once it starts flowering is my Nelly Moser clematis. I think that this place will be really perfect because up here it gets the sun and down here it's shade. And that's what clematis want. Um, how do you say it? Feet in the shade, head in the sun or something like that. Basically the leaves you wanna be nice and warm and then uh, keep the roots cool. So I think this will be a perfect, perfect spot for it. And then coming down here, I always think of this as, um, I don't know why I wanna say coming down the yellow brick, brick road, but like coming down the purple and red brick road. I just think of that whenever I walk through here. I have my Jack Bronera, Jack, Frost Brunnera right there. Doesn't look like much right now. I need to water it in and get all the compost off of the leaves. I did amend everything with compost and then with EB Stone Sure Start just to get it going. Um, and then I do have to spray BT, but it's raining again. <laughs> I mean, goodness. I know everybody's talking about needing rain like in the Midwest. Um, we have it for some reason. It's absolutely crazy. I did want to show you all two things because I'm worried that they are going to fade before my, um, my garden tour, my June garden tour. But look at these guys. So those are, these are alliums. I didn't really know what kind they were because they came in like a pack. Um, a lot of you said that they were little drummer alliums. I hope I'm saying that right. They're amazing. Look at how tall they are. Look at how tall they are. They, they're just absolutely incredible. I am going to plant these every year. I'm going to leave them in here right in this exact spot and I'm just going to keep adding more because it is just, it brings some height to, to the cottage garden. It, I am just so happy with them. And I was worried that they wouldn't bloom and they did and they look beautiful. And then coming down here, I have more alliums that are done. I'm gonna save these and dry them. But look at this, pure white butterfly marguerite daisy. Holy moly, this plant is fantastic. And this is actually three plants right here. It's it's just beautiful. Uh, it's backed by the orange appeal thumbergia that's growing up this obelisk that looks amazing. And then stormburst superbina. It just, man, this cottage garden is thriving this year. It looks so beautiful. Every single plant in here looks beautiful. I'm so happy with it. Now I wanted to come back here real quick and show you all the helichrysum. This is white licorice helichrysum. Can you all see that? They're like growing up absolutely everywhere. Same thing with the um, uh, Supertunia Vista bubblegum. It's kind of getting crazy as well, but I think two crazy things is just not really the way to go. So I think in, unless I find a better place to put this helichrysum, I don't think it's a very good spiller for me in my garden. I think it just might be too happy and be just a little too vigorous. So this is not the Proven Winners white licorice helichrysum. Chrism. This is just some stuff that I found at Home Depot. So I'm not totally sure if Proven Winners performs better, um, but I'm, I'm actually thinking about taking this out just because I really, I just don't like it. I just don't like how crazy it looks. Um, so yeah, so I wanted to show this to you. This is the stuff that I took out of, out of those three black pots in the front.
All right, that is going to be it for today. I'm happy I got out in the garden. I got a lot of stuff done, a lot of stuff planted, and now I'm gonna go back inside and I'm gonna keep packing up your orders. So thank you all so much. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you all have a chance to get in your garden today.